What's up? Thanks for joining me. Today, we are going to look at some cool trailers used to promote comics and graphic novels. I said in a previous video how important it is to make a trailer for your comic because, come on, trailers are sick. No better way to promote your comic and get eyes on it. At least that's what I think. Tell me if there's something better. Straight up. I would love to learn. When I launched my very first Kickstarter for my Last of Us inspired action apocalyptic graphic novel, I used frame by frame animation on Photoshop to bring some of the panels to life and make some banger trailers. But was this a trailer for a comic or an animated show? Oh. Yes. Yes, I mean yes, it was a trailer for a comic book. Listen, moving images are cool. It holds people's attention. You put a trailer with animation toe to toe with a trailer showcasing static images, which one do you think the general consumer is gonna be drawn to? And this trailer snippet had to have made you a bit curious. So check out my site if you wanna do a little more snooping about my comic. There really is so much more you can do when making a trailer for your comic that isn't a string of static pages just ripped from your story. So I thought it would be fun to look at some of the comic trailers that inspired me when I was in the early stages of promoting my comic and Kickstarter. Hey, this is Jim Lee, and you're about to enter into my world of Batman Hush. This opening rocks. Just an immediate plunge into the ink, like it's some sort of Marvel cinematic opening. If I can get a couple more comic series under my belt, that's how I'd want to make an opening. That's why I want to make more comics, not for the love of the series or the storytelling, so I can have enough material to make a sick-ass intro like this. These panels are static, but the nifty editing doesn't make me notice that. Like it's fast, it's snappy, and it still animates in some minor elements to create the illusion that things are moving. Like let's look at this. Let's go back. Like that. I don't think adding that flash of lightning was a lot of work, but damn. If it didn't improve that snippet tenfold. Same deal with those sparks and the sword clashes. Simple, yet effective. The blood spurt, you, you get it. You get it by now. I also like here at the end that the book is being displayed on top of all like the work in progress pages, all the penciled and inked pages. This book is sitting on a mountain of whips. On a mountain of whips. Violence. I'm cursed and compelled by it. So the art is super well done, no question about that. But you can't help but notice that a static image just doesn't have the same like impact as any sort of movement. An undying harbinger of death. After centuries of bloodshed, I'm finally close to an answer. Editing is everything when it comes to making a trailer for your comic. Like these panels aren't moving or flashing around like the last one, but the editing has helped keeping the pacing and the intrigue alive. That's the thesis for this video. Editing is everything. Like the character overlooking the land as time passes. Like that's just an excellent way to use the panels at hand to still tell the trailer's narrative. I actually wonder if it took a page out of Samurai Jack's book for the Adult Swim opening. If I fight for the US government, they'll grant me my one desire. The truth behind my blood-soaked existence. I don't know. <clears throat> I can't help but feel that, that, that maybe adding some sound effects would help make these scenes feel more alive. Like the boots clomping down the hallway, or he's being operated on in the medical room, like maybe a heart monitor. Beep. Beep. I don't know. <laughs> The quicker cuts in the earthquake effect are great to build up the intensity, but would like a helicopter blade spinning or like some sort of skydiving noise of the wind whoosh, like rushing past your face, would that amp things up? Would that get the viewer more immersed in the world that we're watching? And I, I'm just, I'm just speculating here. I, I still like the trailer. Tra trailer's dope. Trailer's dope. All right, Sandman, which I've never actually read. I might have to toss that into the I've never read series that I just started. Okay, starting off with some cool shots, I assume. After Effects. I like 
the way the books are displayed at the end. It just sometimes feels like there's a finite number of ways to show off whatever information is needed at the end of the trailer. But each one of these trailers has done it in a very different way. Ways that have me thinking about how I want to approach it in the future. And I think this is just why companies like Boom and Dark Horse and of course DC are just truly some of like the big boys of the industry. Yes, they've been around for a while and they own crazy IP like Batman, but they also know how to quickly and effectively market a comic for us in like two minutes or less. And then we go and buy and read it ourselves, or at least learn more about it. Like that's still a partial dub. I just feel like comic trailers just have a steeper hill to climb than video games or movie trailers when trying to hook in an audience. And I, I think these companies have nailed it down. And they're also walking that fine line of staying true to the comic book medium while enhancing the panel's visuals and momentum. I think that makes sense, right? Like I could just keep saying moving image is good, but there's more nuance to it. And I'm not trying to throw around big words like momentum or nuance, like I'm some sort of encyclopedia king, but there really is an art on how to show off this art. I love that Dark Horse is mimicking how a movie would present itself. That's a move right there. I actually think that's a good rule of thumb in general. Treat your comic like it's some big Hollywood premiere. It doesn't matter if you're a small time indie creator. Think big, promote it big, and people will see it big. trailer is super stylized. I, lo I love it already. Like a lot of work went into this and it's paying off. Because as of now, from that trailer, I still know nothing about the story and characters. Yet here I am, vibing with the music, soaking up the art and the colors, and just very much tuning into this Miami Vice aesthetic. Okay, yeah, that was sick. Um, if we're gonna get a bit more animated with the trailers, then let's check out this Batman one next. I really, really like the tone of this trailer. Grim, tense, eerie. There's something super intriguing about knowing like nothing other than the general characters of Batman and Joker and wondering why are they trekking through an apocalyptic wasteland? The text syncing up to the beat is a super cool choice too. Okay, but this this scene of Batman swinging the Joker's head around as he trudges along, this one, right? I find something about that motion really captivating for like when I go to read the actual comic. So like when I'm reading the actual comic, my imagination can almost like plug and play what I saw from the trailers and envision something similar when it's just still images in the panels. Like I think if you watch some of the animations from my trailers and then go to read the comic, you'll recall scenes from the trailers and then play it out in your head as it was presented to you. Okay, this next trailer is going to be from the Amulet series, which I love. I think uh, Kazu Kibuishi is a fantastic artist and storyteller and I think he does a really great job putting out a lot of behind the scenes content that I find super inspiring as a creator. I actually recognize a lot of these scenes from the actual book, which is why this trailer was incredibly influential when I was animating my Blood in the Land trailers. The space helmets have the light gleaming off of it to show that they're launching off, or like each character was on their own layer, so during takeoff they're all rattling at their own, their own different speeds. These were just little details used to help liven up the shot. I don't remember if the graphic novel conveys how large the mech suits are in the same way. I'm, I'm sure the book did the job, but the added movement and stuff really helps just show the scope and scale.
love how the sound effects from the comic were added in, like the letters just flying out of the thrusters. That's an approach I'm gonna keep in the back pocket. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Can't wait to see how the trailer for Book Nine will turn out because that should be coming soon. What? <laughs> yeah, yo. Yo, that's my trailer for Blood in the Land Part Two. Why is this here? Because I have a new Kickstarter that just launched today. It actually launched today, the same day this video was posted. The campaign features the first exclusive issue for Blood in the Land Part 2, which consists of Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. That's totaling to like 50 pages of comic. If you're already supporting me on Patreon, then you've already been reading these pages. But for everyone else, or if you want the physical issue and some bonus goodies, come on by and see what all the commotion's about. Or at the very least, check out the dope trailer I made to promote the Kickstarter. Just want you to keep this trailer fever going. And then go make an awesome trailer for your comic yourself. I'd love to see it. And when you make those trailers, Remember, editing is everything.